Hey there, Survivors. Cougar here with a Day 1 Beginner's Guide for Ancestors. Let's start with a quick look around the HUD at the top of the screen. Day, year, time of day, pretty simple. In the lower right-hand corner, you've got your clan status and neuronal energy meter display. When you hear me say neuronal energy, just think XP. So this is your clan status and XP meter. On the clan status display, you've got your adults on the left side, elders on the top, and babies on the bottom in orange. Pregnant females will have an orange circle inside their white dot. Clan members that are moving with you are shown with a line connected to the center of the display. In this clip, you see that I've got two babies and one adult clan member attached to me. The babies are literally attached as I'm carrying them. The other clan member is part of an expedition that I have formed. To unattach a clan member, find a sleep spot and choose End Expedition. Clan members you're interacting with will show with a white glow around them. Clan members in danger will have a red glow around them. Clan members within the outer ring are close to you or your settlement area. Outside the ring means they're outside the settlement area. Let me mention here that babies are basically XP multipliers. Carrying two babies around with you at all times will dramatically increase the amount of XP you earn from everything you do, as the babies are also learning by watching you. So for the XP meter, the center of the circle starts out empty, but will fill with white as you gain XP by doing things and interacting with the environment. It does have a cap, at which point you'll need to spend some XP points by evolving at a sleep spot before you can gain more XP. In the center of the bottom of the screen, you've got your life expectancy meter. The life expectancy meter takes into account hunger, thirst, sleep, and things like injuries or illnesses. The size of the green circle will shrink as you get hungry, thirsty, tired, or injured. It will flash with a yellow ring as you do things that replenish your health and flash green when you've satisfied your hunger, thirst, or sleep requirement. The overall size of the life expectancy meter will diminish naturally as your primate ages. Your primate will age faster if you don't take care of them by giving them the proper amount of food, water, and rest, and healing their injuries and illnesses as quickly as possible. In the lower left corner, you've got your fear meter. The eye icon in the center will turn yellow if you're being stalked by a predator, and red if the predator is actually trying to attack you. The bar on the left side shows how much dopamine your primate has. Dopamine is the chemical that helps us remain calm and collected in stressful situations. If your primate is stressed out for too long, they can run out of dopamine and panic, at which point they will run away from danger as fast as they can and may even find themselves suddenly back at their settlement area. Now let's talk about your basic game mechanics. Most of the game's controls operate on an action on release mechanic meaning you hold an action button down to prepare the action, then release to fire it. This works for everything from jumping, to fighting, to grooming clan members, to making tools, to preparing foods and medicines. Most of the time, the proper moment to release the button will be indicated with a clicking or chiming sound. Now, I'm going to talk about combat in depth in another video, but be advised that when you're first starting out, it is not unusual to hear no chime when trying to dodge an attack or stage a counterattack. This is simply because your primate is so slow to complete those actions on day one that you never even have a chance to dodge or attack. Your primate will get faster at this, and you will hear that chime eventually, but you may have to try and fail a few times to advance those particular neurons to the point where you consistently hear that chime in time to do something about it.
as a day one beginner, you're probably going to want to spend the entire first day here at your settlement area just familiarizing yourself with the environment. Use intelligence mode and use all your senses, sight, smell, hearing, to learn as much as you can about everything around you. Grass, rocks, sticks, potential food sources, for example. You can stand up in intelligence mode to get a better view around you and to gain some XP toward moving around on two legs. Note that there are some very simple actions that will not be available to you until you've banked a little bit of XP, like using both your hands and moving around on two legs. Let me quickly mention that there are a lot of things that will give you an XP bonus for doing it twice. It indicates that you didn't just do it by accident, but you're doing it on purpose. Most of those things, however, will have to wait until day two when we can use both our hands to make weapons and tools. On day one, you should be paying special attention to any notification telling you that you have matured a neuron. If you've banked enough XP to mature any particular neuron, you should immediately head to a sleep spot and evolve to advance that neuron. That allows you to immediately make use of your new skills and uses up some of the XP you've been gathering to make room for more if you've hit the XP cap. So to quickly recap, if you're playing this for the first time and you've seen the opening cinematic where a baby gets separated from the clan, and you've gone through the process of moving that baby to a hiding place, and now you are in an adult primate back at your settlement area, you're going to want to pick up the one baby that is here at the settlement area, then immediately go retrieve the other baby and bring him back home. Then spend the rest of the day, now that you've got two babies on you, so you're maximizing your XP gains, spend the rest of the day just picking up and inspecting everything you can. Edible fruits and plants, water, rocks, sticks, grass, beehives, mushrooms. Look at it and identify it, and identify it with smell if possible. If you can see it, pick it up and inspect it. If it's edible, eat it, even if it makes you sick. You're going to develop tolerances to all the foods that make you sick at first, the more you eat them. So eat those mushrooms and get sick from them. Eat whatever else you come across and get sick from it. That's fine. That's making you better in the long run. Stomach sickness will go away on its own over time, but to get rid of it faster, drink water. That should do it for day one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Leave a like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and there'll be more coming going over various other game mechanics like combat, tool creation and use, and generational and evolutionary leaps. Stay safe, survivors.